Okay, so uh, today my friend wants to hook up dual batteries to his Tahoe and luckily in this setup he's already got a second tray for a dual battery so I just thought to record the video and uh, we already took the other battery out over here but uh, we're gonna add this is gonna be the main starting battery on the left like it always was and we're just gonna tap off of it and uh, put the secondary battery here because he's gonna add some accessories later that is gonna draw more amperage and he's already upgraded his alternator so. So what are you talking about, dude? That this isn't gonna fit right here or something. You got plenty of room. Never said it wouldn't. Yeah, you did. Alright, so to replace this, we're uh or put to add this battery, we're gonna add in a yellow top Optima, which is uh the in-between. If you don't know anything about Optima batteries, the red one is starting. And the yellow one is dual purpose, so it has deep cycle and starting capability. And the blue is completely deep cycle. Uh, set this up, we got some electrical tape. I've got some marine terminals so that later on when he hooks up accessories, it's really easy to just tap off of it. <clears throat> then we need a cable that's gonna go from the negative to the uh, ground of the car. And then we've got a cable to connect the positive side of the main starting battery to the secondary uh, semi-deep cycle battery. <clears throat> and we're gonna have to modify this a little bit to uh, fit it on there, but it'll work good. I'm gonna ground the battery itself back to the frame which should be fine so I only need one of these twist terminals because he's not going to need to add any accessories up here off of the negative he's just going to need to add positive back and then whatever accessories he adds he can ground back to the frame we're not in the backyard we're in a driveway so he's a driveway mechanic <laughs> I have four ASEs so whatever I got a GED and GPS <laughs> Damn, it's hot. You know, you can like talk to me and shit. It's not like I'm not gonna edit it out later. <laughs> you can act normal. Camera guy's not allowed to talk. <laughs> hey, so you're gonna wanna put this preferably on the frame <clears throat> coming off of this second battery. Uh, or even if you have to, somewhere off of the body, that's a solid piece of metal. But you're going to want to try and find a bolt that already exists because it's a pretty solid connection, a big hole. You don't want to have to drill another hole and then put a new bolt in. Uh, you want to find another bolt hole that already exists, take it out, and then sand around it real good, which I'll show you, and then screw it back down onto it. Alright, so I found a bolt hole that I think I'm going to be able to use, but I have to sand it down and then get my meter out and test it to make sure it has good continuity first. I couldn't really find one off of the frame, so it's going to be off of the body, but it should work. Uh, I'm going to use this multi-tool, which is really not the right tool for this, but I'm trying to cheat and be quick, so... Actually, that worked pretty damn good. I gotta get my meter. Now, this, this, I should probably explain this. Uh, on your multimeter, you wanna go to ohms, to the lowest setting, and you're just trying to see if there's continuity. So right now it says infinity. If you don't know how to read that, that means nothing's connected. But if you see, I connect these two together and it's gonna give me a reading of almost zero because there's almost no resistance. You want there to be as little resistance as possible. Now the only problem with this is that this is not gonna show how many amps can go through system because obviously I'm putting a small amount of charge through it. However, almost everything in the vehicle is grounded to either the body, the engine, which the engine goes to the chassis and then back to the battery. So 
as long as it's connected to a good piece of metal that's connected to the rest of the metal you should be good on the amperage part <clears throat> so right now I'm gonna try and go to the frame ground on the starting battery to this computer plate right here so that I can see if I'm getting a good solid reading through the whole car and that one I got to touch over this is just one of the ground straps for the vehicle and then here so then if you come over now that I'm connected on both of those I've got almost no resistance so that's a good sign that I found a good ground to use uh, and so that's what we're going to use because it's convenient So I'm just going to use the original bolt that I pulled out of this plate before I sanded it <clears throat> You gonna sand the bolt? Uh, no, no, I shouldn't need to sand the bolt It would be nice if it were not coated like this But at the same time this plate is going to be touching against here, which is really what I need We just want to make sure that's nice and tight so it gets a good connection there. And I was planning on grounding to the frame, so I got a little too long of a wire, but it's all right. We can just coil it up down in here, and it shouldn't be a big deal. Now, because this, you don't really need to at this point, but because this came with an extra auxiliary for the ground, I'm going to go ahead and make a small ground off of this and connect it to the body over here. This is not how a work van should look. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm gonna verify his kitchen is, is equally as dirty. <laughs> Somebody's getting the package down there. <laughs> Bet it's a sex robot. <laughs> Pick those up on eBay. Don't ask me how I know. I'll show you how to strip a wire, but you should probably know or not be touching that car. Big shrimp ramp. You want me to do it? No, I got it. It's like the only thing strong on you anymore is your belt. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> That's so true. It's fucking rain, dude. No cussing. Might be an 11 year old trying to change his fucking wires out in his fucking <laughs> dad's truck. <laughs> I found a hole that was already there that I'm just putting a self tapper through. Did you say Optima was a battery you would recommend? Uh, yeah, they're just really expensive. So if you want to do stuff the right way with the top notch stuff, it's top of the line. They have other medium cycle batteries, even like AutoZone brand that will do the same thing. You're just getting kind of a lesser product. It's kind of like anything else, you get what you pay for. Don't be a cheap fuck. You get this right, it'll be wet. It'll never work again. What? <laughs> Put it in your 1950s fucking CIA briefcase. <laughs> it works, man, and it's cheap. <clears throat> you see, I had to take this, uh, The standard cable, this is a perfect length to buy from the store without having to go to an audio store and get different kind of cable. But you had to cut off the terminal so that you have a terminal on both sides. So we had to buy the two gauge because that's what it is. And if you don't have the right tools, it's pretty hard to cr uh, crimp on there. But you want to make sure it's on there 
super firm and never gonna come off period yeah I mean I guess I have to assume that people know nothing which really if you know nothing you shouldn't be working on your car you should at least know a little bit but you don't want a positive terminal of your battery or any cable coming off of it to touch the ground or you're gonna have a big spark problem uh, and it's not gonna be a good day so you want to make sure except for the part that connects to the battery is completely protected so that it won't ground out that was delicious all right so at this point we're ready to actually hook the two together which you want that to be the last thing you do because once you hook the positives up then it's pretty much live negatives aren't really going to do much where are all my little fucking tools and shit? Here? Right here? Where's that little press right here? Right here, dude. Oh, no. Sorry, it's not. It's the... I had it. The snips. Dude. <laughs> Give me back my crescent wrench. Oh, it's hot. God dumb. Stupid. <laughs> Laugh it up, motherfucker. Watch me wire this shit so your car blows up. Okay, so now we're ready to hook up the original cables back up, positive and negative. <clears throat> yeah, because there's a certain depth. Because it's fucking junk. That's the way all the batteries are, they're soft. Fucking junk. Okay, it's enough. Shut up. I'm trying to tell you, man. It's a brand new battery, shut you up. You don't care what it is. You don't know things and stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna hook up this side which is the negative. Oh, uh, well, that's going to be part of your fucking problem. See? Yeah. If this looks like this, then don't be trying to use it. I should have caught that beforehand. Uh, I put that when I there. pulled that out of the old one, this is uh, this person's fault, not mine. So I got to clean this off now because this is the thread from the old battery. So I hope I didn't fuck up this new one. There you go. Okay, so this is an expensive kit. This is from when I was a mechanic. It's over $100, but this is a re-threading kit. It's not a tap and die. There's a big difference between a tap and die and a re-threader. This is just gonna clean up threads that have been screwed up. So you gotta find the one. This has metric and uh, SAE. This 3.8 seems to be fitting on there pretty good. So once it gets to a certain point, you kind of got to see where it's at, but <clears throat> yeah, that's that feels pretty good. So you take it and run that over the old thread, and it should straighten it back out again. And it'll strip anything out, which he said he put JB Weld in it, which is non-conductive. So I'm not really sure why he did that, but... Only a little bit. See, it scraped all that off, and then now... If you look at that, how much better it looks than it did before. Does that camera do a pretty good job of being it's up close? Okay. And bring it on there a couple more times just to bring anything extra out. So what do you do if it strips out the battery terminal insert? Well, you're fucked. Pocket. Well, I'll take that back. I've never tried this before. We'll try it right now just for the fuck of it. If it's a 3 8 thread, then if you have a re-thread kit, you have the other side too. Now, the thing about it is the metal in the battery is really soft. So, um... That's how they get you. It depends... <laughs> It depends on how much you fucked it up. But, if I run this through, that fits in there really tight, so actually I know it's pretty good. Were you able to see that on the... Your fucking stupid hands in the way, but... <laughs> now this is cleaned up. Hopefully it should fit in here good now. Which it does. You just can't over tighten these like he did because then you'll have to use JB Weld. 
Damn. What about the, the Dodge trucks? Alright. Mm, it's moving it. That's pretty tight. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Alright. So we got the negative thing figured out. Uh, now it's time to put the positive on. And that's the last thing that we have to do. So uh, that's already hooked in. Positive here. Now you don't want, when you put this on, you don't want the other side to touch anything. Oh, that's great. That's okay. So hold that. Alright, so then you take the other side, and we'll worry about uh, attaching it down here in a minute. But you're going to want to screw this off, and I have a feeling I'm going to need to drill this terminal out. Unfortunately, which I do. So, we're going to pause the video for a minute and drill this hole out. Alright, so we drilled it out off camera to fit this post that you're gonna have that problem if you get these connectors but uh, he did it and it's fine now and then we got to figure out a way to run this across and over so all I'm gonna do is loosen that back up a little bit since I have some extra slack pull that tight Alright, from, uh, here, put it on me. From this point, really, you don't need any more instruction. If you don't know how to use wire ties and tuck wires out of the way, then I really don't know what to do for you. But, uh, now we're done hooking the dual batteries up, and we're gonna start the car. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? What's your uh, battery gauge say? Should say over 14. Not over 14. Uh, but it's still working pretty good. It'll charge up. And voila! Dual batteries.